Legend has it that strange things happen when living in this apartment. A man walked into the apartment. The house was quiet. There was a noise from upstairs. A little boy was standing in the corner with his back to him. The man turned back as if he felt something. But the little boy was missing. The door creaks open. The apartment manager walked in. The man hurriedly introduced himself. He was a cartoonist specializing in horror comics. This time he came to the apartment to collect horror material. The apartment manager didn't care too much. He told the cartoonist that there was an orphanage here a long time ago. One day there was an accidental fire, but the adults of the orphanage abandoned the children and ran away. Since then, strange rumors have been circulating here. Some people could even hear strange sounds. The apartment manager then told the cartoonist several stories. The first story took place in room 504. The homeowner here is a novelist. On the day of the viewing, Chang Hoon heard the sound of a child downstairs. The real estate agent is still sparing no effort to praise the house. Chang Hoon did not say much, and he just wanted to rent a quiet place to write. But after he really moved here, he could always hear the sound from downstairs. It seemed that someone was hitting the ceiling with a wooden stick, causing a vibration upstairs as well. But the weirdness didn't stop there. Chang Hoon turned on his computer and went to get some water from the fridge. When he came back, he found that the computer was missing from his desk. The sound of laughter suddenly came from the room. Chang Hoon went to the place where the laughter was coming from. The door behind him suddenly opened. He tried to close the door but found a pair of black and sneakers in the room. The shoes had a name written on them. Without waiting for Chang Hoon to take a closer look, his laptop suddenly fell down. A child flashed past his eyes. Chang Hoon went after him. The hallway was empty. Chang Hoon was furious and came to settle the score with the apartment manager. But the security camera showed that no one had been in his room. What's going on? Chang Hoon wanted to find out for himself. He went to room 404. He found many pairs of sneakers in there. There was a single shoe in the shoe cabinet by the door. It made a pair with the one he found at home. This convinced Chang Hoon that the child downstairs was the one who had broken into his house. So Chang Hoon put the child's shoe in a bag and threw it into the garbage. But that night, Chang Hoon was awakened by the sound of trying to open the door. He walked out of the room and found that the shoes he had thrown away this morning appeared in front of him. Did he meet a ghost? There was a sudden knock on the door of his room. Chang Hoon tiptoed to the door. He looked through the cat's eye. The doorway was lit up with blood-like lights. Three spooky children were standing across the room with their heads down. Chang Hoon held his breath and saw the children outside the door slowly raising their hands. <laughs> Chang Hoon collapsed on a pile of shoes. When were these shoes laid here again? Before he could react, there was an eerie laughter from above his head. He slowly looked up and saw a bunch of children's ghosts hanging from the ceiling. I guess you can guess what happened to him. The administrator followed up with a second story. The heroine of this story is a beautiful woman. Her name is So Jean, and she is an ordinary employee at the drugstore. So Jean lives in room 907 of the apartment. She usually lives alone, but she is not single. She has a boyfriend. He is also a married man. One day, so Jean received a call from her boyfriend. He sounded very nervous. He hung up after saying that he was coming to see So Jean tonight. So Jean didn't know why, but she waited patiently at home. Strangely enough, her boyfriend was soaked to the skin when he arrived. But it wasn't raining outside. He told So Jean. His wife already knew about their relationship. He wanted to hide at Su Jean's house for a while. So Jean didn't suspect anything. As a result, the next day at work, the police came to So Jean. It turned out that her boyfriend was suspected of killing her family and running away. Now he is wanted by the police. So Jean panicked. She came home and found her boyfriend in the shower and a pile of bloody clothes on the floor. She rushed to pack her things and tried to escape with him. But the boyfriend in the bathroom only repeats. Don't tell anyone. Outside the window. Sirens were already blaring. So Jean could only console herself and started to think of a solution. Just then, there was a knock on the door. So Jean looked through the cat's eye and saw that the person outside was her boyfriend. And who was the person in the bathroom? So Jean told her boyfriend about the situation. He immediately grabbed a hammer and carefully walked toward the bathroom. When he reached the door, he suddenly stopped. The person in the bathroom said, Didn't I tell you not to tell anyone that I'm here? So Jean's eyes widened. She then realized that the whole room was covered with blood. Her boyfriend was standing in the bathroom doorway, holding his wife by the hair. He laughed pervertedly at So Jean's horrified gaze. This is the end of the second story. But the cartoonist felt that there wasn't enough material for these two stories. So he went off on his own to collect a third story.
The main character of the third story is a real estate agent. He lives in room 708 of the apartment. While eating, Hyun Woo would ramble on about the day's encounter and tell his girlfriend. But his girlfriend doesn't say a word. It turns out that Hai Woo's girlfriend is a doll. Only this doll is broken and needs to be sent back to the original factory for repair. Hyun Woo falls asleep at night accompanied by a doll. He hears the sound of gurgling water in the sink. He came over and saw that the sink was blocked. The next day, the repairman pulled out a pile of women's hair from the sink. Hyun Woo thought it was strange but didn't pay much attention to it. At night, he packed up the doll and sent it back to the factory. But he found the sink blocked again. Hai Wu wanted to call the repairman. When he turned his head, the doll on the bed was gone. There was a strange noise behind him. Hai Wu turned his head to look, and a hand came out of the sink and turned off the faucet. Hai Wu was terrified. When he went to work, he was in a trance. His assistant told him that Hai Wu's apartment was originally a cult building. Believers follow the godfather to commit suicide. Later, this apartment building, there are often missing people, as if a curse. That night, Hyun Woo had dinner with the newly bought girlfriend, but then he saw something wrapped in a plastic bag in the sink. He cautiously moved closer to the sink and found that it was the doll that had disappeared earlier. The doll turned its head and looked at Hai Wu. Hai Wu was so scared that he hid in the storage room and locked the door. Outside the door, there was a constant sound of plastic bags rubbing together. The lights in the storage room also suddenly went out. Hyun Woo hurriedly grabbed a lighter for illumination, but stepped on a plastic bag. Behind her, the doll showed a sweet smile. Hai Wu did not die in the end, but his hand was gone. The cartoonist doesn't know enough. He came to the apartment again, hoping the apartment manager would tell more stories. The apartment manager didn't disappoint. He smiled and told the story of room 604 of the apartment. Kyung Bak is a student. He had to stay at a friend's house because he had failed to get into a university. The friend greeted Kyung Bak warmly. He also brought out his favorite kimchi. Kyan Bak wanted to feast on the food, but he found that the food in front of him was all moldy, but his friend didn't seem to see it and took a big bite into his mouth. Kyan Bak didn't dare to eat it. He opened the refrigerator secretly while his friend was out, only to find that the refrigerator was full of moldy and smelly food. Even the room was in total disarray. So, Kyan Bak went to the drugstore and bought a mold remover. He cleaned up his friend's house. In the process, Kyan Bak found a black figure on the wall. He didn't pay much attention to it and used a rag to wipe it off completely. When his friend came home and saw the clean room, he angrily grabbed Kyan Bak's collar and cried out. Ate was terrified by his friend's appearance. He rushed to pack his things to leave, only to find the cleaned house back in its original state. His friend was standing in the doorway, apologizing to Kyan Bak with his head bowed, but his face was more horrible than a leper's. In the next second, the black hand reached out from the picture on the wall and dragged Kyan Bak inside. This fourth story gave the manga artist the chills. He wonders more and more why such a thing happened to the apartment. So the apartment manager gave the manga artist a set of apartment keys. Just go to this room, and you will know all the truths. The cartoonist hesitated for a few seconds but finally took the key. Soon, the cartoonist arrived at room 1504. He opened the door to the room and saw that the room was hung with charms and a tape was placed on the floor. The cartoonist plays the tape. He hears the voice of the apartment manager. Who tells his story? In the old days, the apartment manager F.A. Kim was a thief. He heard that the cult leader had hidden treasures in the apartment, so he brought his friend to the place. They went to room 1504 and found the body of the cult leader inside. The body had a bell chain on its feet and a key in its mouth. F.A. Kim used the key to open the only cabinet in the room. The scary thing was that the cabinet was so dark that nothing could be seen in it. But F.A. Kim didn't care about that. He explored the darkness with his hand and took out a handful of money from inside. It seems that the rumors were true. F.A. Kim was so excited that he forgot all about the danger. He took out the bag and filled it with money frantically, but his friend turned away from the view for only one second, and F.A. Kim was gone. He tried to pick up the money on the ground but saw the body of the godfather standing up in the corner. He didn't dare to stay, grabbed the money bag, and ran. But he ran back to the car but found the car keys in F.A. Kim's hand. Just then, F.A. Kim appeared outside the car. He was relieved and asked F.A. Kim to take out the car keys. But when he looked down, he saw a bell chain hanging from F.A. Kim's foot. The next moment, the car shook, and he was killed. And F.A. Kim became the janitor of the apartment. After listening to F.A. Kim's story, the locker in front of the cartoonist suddenly opened. He was afraid to go forward and turned around to walk away. 
but he saw a dry body. The cartoonist was so frightened that he stepped back and retreated into the cabinet at once. The cabinet door immediately closed, and the cartoonist saw F.A. Kim through the gap. And he came over, he smiled and said I would miss you. F.A. Kim then took the form of the manga artist and left. The real manga artist was trapped in the closet forever, swallowed by the endless darkness. It looks like the comic book artist will become the apartment manager of the apartment, welcoming the next group of residents. End of the film. Every little story is great. If you like it, you can go see this movie. Remember to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.